It's really crazy when you finally understand why things happen for a reason. Had I started my clinical rotations when I thought I was supposed to in April or even in June or even in August, I wouldn't have been able to save my father's life. And I'm gonna tell you exactly how things went down. Hey y'all, welcome back to Made It to Medicine with Vix, that's me. And I'm a medical student at the University of Illinois College of Medicine on the Chicago campus. I come to you weekly with videos about my pre-med term med school life and a little bit of everything in between. Well, if you haven't watched last week's video already, please go and do that. I'll link that somewhere above. But a few times in the video, I kept hinting at how things happen for a reason and I can't wait to share this information with y'all. Well, I got confirmation from my father that it would be okay for me to share this with you and just to like be a beacon of hope or a little bit of encouragement to someone else to let you know that although you can't see how the storm is going to end, although you can't understand why, you're in such a difficult period of time, I genuinely now really believe that everything does happen for a reason. Before we get into that, please do me a favor and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the share button, drop me a comment down below. All right, now let's get into the video. So if you, if you know me, I am extremely close to my parents. They are the only people that I talk to every single day, okay? Like, and I'm talking multiple times a day to the point where I will tell them, I bet y'all think I don't have no friends because why am I always calling you? Like whenever I'm on a break, whenever I'm on lunch, whenever it's like nighttime, basketball games on, football games on, I'm calling my parents. I'm calling my parents, asking them little things like, oh, well, should I contact this person or should I do this? How do I cook that? All the things, like I am always talking to them. So, had I been in my clinical rotation, this was the day before my birthday, so October 2nd, birthday eve, I would have been in my surgery rotation, would have been the week of my shelf exam, which is the culminating exam for the block that you're in. And from what I've heard, surgery, you're in the hospital for at least 12 hour days. So I'm assuming that when I actually start my rotations, I won't have this type of freedom to contact my parents multiple times daily. So right now, you know, I'm gonna keep in my life as I have been my entire life. Um, so this day I was, it was surprisingly warm in Chicago. So I decided I wanted to go for like a 45 minute walk. The entire walk, I was on the phone with my father. I was just talking to him like, oh yeah, I studied this this morning. Let me recount some things for you that I've done. That he was like, just telling me thing, things, you know, we were just conversing. It was a normal conversation. Later that evening, I had to tutor and I believe I tutored two kids back to back on that Monday, which is very uncommon. I usually tutor one child on Monday. Day. I try to only make like one child a day unless it's the weekends, but one of my Saturday kids, she needed to reschedule. So I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. I was about to call my father and then I realized I got a package from my brother. He told me when I get the package to let him know. So I'm calling him, we're conversing. So then I call my father at about, let's say 7.02 to 7.04 p.m. And when I was on the phone with him, he was a little bit incoherent. And if you know my father, you know that when he just wakes up, he's a little like all over over the place, but he'll answer the phone, but he isn't really like, he hasn't really come to awareness to know what he's talking about or what he's saying. So then he said something, something stroke. And I was like, who had a stroke father? What are you talking about? And he was like, nothing. And I'm like, what? What are, you, what are you talking about? He was like, nothing. I'm like, okay, did you just wake up? No, I didn't just wake up. All right, is mother at home? No, she's at choir rehearsal. I'm like, okay, this is interesting. So what are you talking about? He couldn't explain to me what he was talking about. He then dropped his phone on the floor and he was talking, but I couldn't really hear him. He was just like, call me back. I dropped my phone on the floor. I can't find it. So to me, I'm thinking if you drop your phone on the floor, why can't you just pick it up? But I still didn't think anything, you know, other than about it than what he said and I'm just like okay cool I call him back two or three times he doesn't answer so I'm like all right I'm gonna give him a couple of minutes because he said he couldn't find a phone so maybe even with the phone ringing he's not going to be able to answer it in retrospect he was on FaceTime with my sister and so that's why he didn't answer the phone and he had gone to the basement to play some pool because he loves playing pool he's been playing his whole life um and so he was sitting on the couch in the basement talking to my sister as she tells the story he says oh this is your mother on the other line let me call you back because me and my mother have the same exact 
exact name, but our names are not the same, his phone, but roll with me. So he answers the phone and as he's talking, he isn't really making sense. As I've told y'all before, I am not the crises type of person. I do not want to work in critical care. I don't want to work in intensive care unit. I don't want to even go into internal medicine because of the possibility of working with those type of patients. I'm very emotional. I get very connected with my patients and like, cause that's how I am with people that it was in that moment that I realized that my father was having a stroke and it was too much for me to handle. But it was weird because it wasn't the typical stroke signs that they tell you or that you've heard about maybe on TV, seeing pamphlets or signs on a bus or even things I've learned in medical school. He was having a hemorrhagic stroke, an active bleed in his brain, a vessel in his brain had popped due to high blood pressure and he was disoriented. It was affecting or impacting his speech at times, but it was interesting because he was still coherent enough to talk to me. And so I told him, I think you're having a stroke and I immediately started crying and I'm like, we have to get you to the hospital right now. And the only thing he could say was, I'm okay, I'm okay, don't worry about me, I'm okay. And I'm like, no father, you're having a stroke, we have to get you to the hospital. And I'm like, please stay on the phone, I'm gonna call Tiffany, which is my oldest sister because she lives around the corner from my parents. He's like, no, I'm gonna call you back in 10 minutes. I'm like, no, please stay on the phone. So I call her from my computer, thank God for Apple, where you can call from multiple devices, try to just call on the phone, they're like, you're using your phone. So I had to call on FaceTime and I'm like, can you please go to the house? I think father's having a stroke. My sister was in her pajamas. She was at her house within 120 seconds. She's like, call 911 and tell them everything that you just told me. In the midst of all of that, my father hung up and was like, I'm gonna call you back. And I'm just like, what the heck? I can't, I cannot do this right now. Like, this is just too much. I feel helpless because I don't have a car. I'm not there with him. Like, what am I supposed to do? Um, so I call 911. I'm crying on the phone to the dispatcher and she's just like, all right, please breathe. What exactly happened? It, I'm giving her the timeline because that's something that I do know that with strokes, it is time sensitive before damage, you know, it's like irreversible or the person that you know is now a shell of themselves. My sister told me to hang up from calling my mother because I was too emotional and she didn't want it to like be alarming to her. And she's amazing under crises. So she got to the house real fast. The um, fire department, they were there first on the scene and then the paramedics came. They said he had an extremely high blood pressure and to my experience it was hypertensive crises or emergency depending on how you look at it which is like I think it was like 180 over maybe 80 and they had the nerve to ask him oh do you want to go to the hospital how are you going to ask somebody if they want to go to the hospital and their blood pressure is uncontrollably high I was upset I was very happy that my sister had me on FaceTime because I was like no this is not a question this is about when the paramedics get there he needs to get in the ambulance right now because no like what do you mean take it again um I think at that point it was continuing to rise so when the paramedics get there they put him in the ambulance and I called him on his phone and I'm just like all right do you know who I am he's like of course I know who you are and I'm just like okay well how are you feeling right now he's like I feel fine but I did get a little dizzy I felt a little lightheaded but I feel okay and it was just very um hurtful to me because maybe hurtful isn't the right word but like you know how you make all of these plans and then in the blink of an eye your plans can change. We've been talking about my birthday for weeks and saying like, my mother and my father are both like, okay, what kind of restaurant do you want to go to so we can all celebrate together? Um, and then this happens the day before and birthdays are a big deal to me, but I couldn't even think about my birthday because I'm just like, wow, my parents are really my best friends and I do not know how this situation is going to end with my father and this is too much. I cannot deal with it. And then when they got to the emergency department, the my sister had me on speakerphone and the, the doctors literally said, your daughter saved your life. I am the type of person where I'm gonna give credit where credit is due. I didn't really think that I saved his life. I thought that maybe it was God in some kind of way speaking through his subconscious to say the word stroke because I'm not sure that I would have realized the signs enough to be alert and active to get him the assistance that he needs. But after talking to so many people, apparently I was. Like I did exactly what I was supposed to do. As the emergency medicine doctor said, all. Of of the long study days that she has, all that information that she's getting into her head, it's paying off because she knew what she was hearing wasn't right. Even though she couldn't lay eyes on you and she, she couldn't actively see um, the symptoms, but she, she heard the signs. And in that moment, that's when I realized that what I'm doing is worth it, that medicine is worth it. I know I made this video um, 
saying, is medical school worth it? And I left it on a cliffhanger saying, I don't know, to be determined, maybe when I graduate, I'll be like, yeah, all this trauma, this turmoil that I've been through, maybe it'll be worth it for my future patients to go back to the hood and help those who look like me, who come from same situations, background, socioeconomic statuses as me, to propel and further advance in life, to have equitable access to quality care. It's crazy, again, because we always look so far in the future and not realizing that, again, things can change in the blink of an eye. And in that blink of an eye, I said medicine is so worth it because my sister was on FaceTime with him. And although she saw that things were a little bit strange, it didn't click enough for her to say, wait a minute, maybe we should get you some assistance. It was definitely a life-defining moment. Previously, before any of this happened, the only person I saved was a little girl when I was a lifeguard during maybe my second or third year as a lifeguard. And she was active, drowny. So, I mean, I feel like if I didn't get her, another lifeguard was going to, but that was the only life that I'd saved. But in this moment, this is to date the most meaningful life that I could have ever saved because he's one of the people that brought me into this world. And I am very happy to say that like his recovery is going well. He's in rehab three times a week, three hours a day. And in the hospital, his speech, you know, he couldn't really get everything out. He was having like some word finding issues, but it's now been almost two months. And when he first got discharged from the hospital, we could only stay on the phone for like two minutes because his comprehension was not up to par. But now we're having conversations as like as close to normal as they had been. We can literally sit on the phone for over an hour going from one topic to the next. And that is the real reason why I started going to my parents' house every single Sunday now because I can't, I can't let or I can't feel like anything is more important who mean the world to me. Yes, I aspire to be a physician. Yes, I do put in a lot of long hours. Yes, I am doing this work. But what does the work mean if when I finally get to cross the stage, the people that have been rocking with me the whole time aren't even there in the audience to see me do it? Or that I'm just letting life pass by with this tunnel vision, just solely thinking about medicine and not anything else. Um, it was a wake up call. It was a wake up call I didn't really want, but it was a wake up call that not only I needed, but a wake up call that my father needed to make some changes in his life to control his blood pressure better. Although it had never ever in his life been that high, but stress is a silent killer, which is why like I'm choosing, you know, not to let medicine stress me out. Life happens, like it's okay. Like when I say life happens, it's medical stuff happens. Like it's cool, but like my real life means more than this profession that I'm aspiring to go into, to be things that I futuristically want to do. Um, but yeah, I think that now, I think at least every person of color needs to have at least one person in medicine in their family, whether it's a doctor, a nurse practitioner, a nurse, uh, you know, someone in your family to know signs and symptoms of certain medical crises so that you can act quickly, use the knowledge that you have to actually save someone's life. I'm going to play some audio for you that his doctor said to my mother and to him during one of his visits and it literally brought tears to my eyes. And this is a lot for me to share this with y'all because I'm, yes, my, my thing is to be relatable, transparent, but this is real <laughs> vulnerability. Um, I'm a, a, I mean, I'm sure that's very traumatizing for her, but she literally saved your life. Yeah, she did. She did. How is she doing after all of that? Um, it was kind of a, a struggle for her. Very traumatic. Um, they're very close, uh -huh. but um, she's made some modifications in her life so that she can spend Sundays with him now. Not making what Sunday. Is the test, she, test she's trying to test. If she's she doing, test. I think, core. No, I'm talking about she has to test this test. Yeah, core. A core one or core two? One, I guess. Core one? Yeah. But um, she takes off on Sunday so that she can spend some time with him because she feels like that's important. Oh, cool. mm -hmm. So that's why she's taking time out with him now. How far does she live? Where does she live? Okay. So she's only like, if she catches the bus, she's like, like half an hour away. And sometimes when she comes, I just take her home. So it's working well. Good. Yep. She heard it. She said it's not right. And um, called ambulance, called our other daughter that lives six blocks away. Wow. She came. 
and yeah, he didn't want to go in the ambulance, but um, he started talking garbled again, and so they took him. And when he got there, blood pressure was over two, her top number was over two hundred. So, and he couldn't see on this side. Wow. Yeah. So yes, yeah, she saved his life. My girls, they take care of me. <laughs> wow. Yes, it's traumatizing, but you know, when things like this happen, it's like God's way of saying like things could always be worse. Mm -hmm. But it's probably something she needed to go through to give her inspiration to keep going. Because mm -hmm. I remember you told me that that mm -hmm. you know it was hard for her with her exams or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to witness your dad like that, right? You know what I mean. But um, and it's an eye opener for her too. As much as studies could be stressful, family comes first too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a really hard balance. I I agree. But wow, she's your angel. Yeah, <laughs> praise God! I praise God for that. Yes. But if I could just encourage someone to keep going, if I had been in that rotation, I wouldn't have been on the phone with them. So literally everything seemingly happens for a reason. And this time I'm so happy that I was obedient and I still called him and I followed up with the call and I acted as quickly as I did because wow, I literally saved my father's life.